Hi, this is how to make a worksheet in PowerPoint. PowerPoint is so versatile. I love using it. Um, everything pretty much that I use or that I make in my um, online store is used through PowerPoint. It's an easy way to manipulate images around the page without worrying about it messing with your format. So let me show you currently the worksheet I'm going to show you how to make. And if you notice, I have used clip art, I've used shapes, and I have also used text. All right, and I made sure to have the standards that it covers along with my name and the date. The images that you see today, the clip art is by Apples and Acorns, and the fonts that I'm using are from AA Fonts. So let's get down to business. Let's open up PowerPoint and the first thing you're going to do actually since we're in PowerPoint I'm just going to open up a new one <clears throat> is we want to change the orientation of our slides so right now they're in landscape we want to change those to portraits so to do that I like to highlight and click the text box um, and get rid of them so to do that I click I hold the shift I click the other one, keeping the shift down, and I can I let go and then click delete. And then I want to change the page setup. I go to file, page setup, and I click this right here. It changes it to um, portrait. Once I do that, sometimes I like to insert a blank slide after or a duplicate slide just to have more than one. But for right now, I'm just showing you um, a simple way to make a worksheet. So even though I got rid of the text boxes, the first thing I like to do is add my own text box. Now notice I'm at 61%. I'm going to enlarge that to 100 just so that I can see what I'm working with here. And I'm going to make the name. An easy way to make that line is to do the shift key and holding down the underline. However, what I like to do is something a little bit different because I don't know if the font that I want to use is going to make it dashed when I make that line. Sometimes that happens, we might get a dashed line. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this and I'll change the font to make it cute. My favorite font is by AA Fonts and that is AA Claire. I'm gonna leave it at 18, that's a pretty, pretty good size. Now I want to insert shape great about shapes is that you can use so many different things and so easy. This one is a line shape and I'm going to extend it out to make room for the name and then to move it I make sure it's highlighted I can move the up and down arrow key to put it wherever I want it to be and then I'm going to right click. If you're using a Mac, right click is two fingers. And then I want to go to format shape. And format shape is for anything that you're working with. You can click on that for um, a box. You can click on that for um, a line. If you want a box around a clip art piece, you could even do that. So the shadow, if you notice, there's a shadow underneath this. I don't want it. I want it to look flat. Otherwise, some of my shapes will be flat and some of them will have a shadow. And sometimes that looks nice. But when I'm working on a worksheet, I want it to not have a shadow. So I uncheck that box. Then I want to go to line. And right now my line is blue. I want it black. So I click this. It says solid. I click this right here and I can change it to whatever color I want. And then fill would be basically on this shape. It would be what color it is, but we're not going to worry about fill for a line. And I click away, and this is what my picture currently looks like. So now, if you remember on the worksheet, I made this cute little border rectangle with um, rounded edges. I'll show you how to do that. And to do that, again, I go to Insert, and I go to Shape. This one is one of my favorites, just because it's a rectangular shape or square if you want, but it has those rounded edges, which I really like. And I drag it across, make it as big as you want it to be. And then again, we want to format it. So right click, go to format shape. 
Now this is where that fill and the line and the shadow come into play. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the shadow. Next click on line. I always want it to be black because this is a black and white copy. Teachers don't want to be making copies of color things unless it's um, something for their classroom generally. And then the style is actually the thickness and then or if you want it to be double lined. I like to have a thicker line if I'm doing a dashed line, so I usually do around three point. And if you notice, it changed it here to very thick. And my fill, here's the difference. Don't do white, you want no fill. No fill is going to make it so that there's no line around it. Let me show you the difference. If I click white, and I'm done with it. This actually would have its own shadow. You can't really tell right now, but it would have its own shadow. Um, also, if there's a picture underneath it, you wouldn't see it because this is actually a color. If you do no fill, it's going to be just a line. Now, the other tricky part about that is if, if you have it with fill, you can click anywhere inside the shape and it will highlight it. If you do no fill, you can't do that. Watch what happens. I click inside the shape, it's nothing. I have to click on the line because I've now changed it so that the only thing that it's going to be able to do is, is that line. Okay, once I do that, I'm going to insert a text box and this is where I'm going to add my directions. I'm trying to remember what I put. Let's see. I'm basically copying my own work that I made here just a little bit ago. Um, oh, before I do that, so the standard, do you see here this small little box or this little bit of words here? That's the standard that we're working on. So I made sure that I have the standards up for California standards or whatever state you're in. Um, we use Common Core in my district. So I'm using um, the Common Core standards based on California. And I am writing down circle all the whoops rectangular prisms I can extend that out and of course I love changing the font so let me find something cute how about a, a. Sally and it doesn't really matter I mean this is just an example so I probably wouldn't use that font on a worksheet I also like to have it in the middle. I'm kind of particular about that. I like to have my font or my um, words centered. It just makes it easier when I'm moving stuff around. And now to make these shapes. Oh, I'm not done with my, I'm sorry. I'm not done with this. Okay, so again, I've highlighted the shape. I right click, go to format shape. I got too far ahead of myself. I go to line and I go to weights and arrows and the style that I want is thick so it's three and then here is where I can choose what kind of lines the one that I used on I think it was this one yeah so that's the one I use and I'm looking at it thinking you know I want that a little bit bigger so I'm going to no I don't I don't want that bigger I like it at three and I'm gonna leave that alone and now I can add those other shapes I go to insert shape and if you see, these are all what we call plain shapes. And then here are some solid figures. So I can drag it over, or I can just click on it and drag it how I want. I like to just drag it over and manipulate it once it's over here. The other shape I had was a plain shape. So to change it how I want, uh, I'm going to make this into a rectangular prism. So to do that, I just play around with, with the different boxes and make it however big or small or long or tall you want it to be and again we want to format it so right click I want my lines to be black I don't, do not want a shadow and I want my fill to be no fill and there's my rectangular prism here's my plane shape again I want no fill I want my line black and I want no shadow and again I can change the this, the thickness of the lines if I wanted to but for this demonstration I'm just gonna leave it as is and then you saw um, that I had a cute little picture up here 
I love clip art. I have a huge collection of clip art. Um, the clip art that I'll be using today is from Apples and Acorns. And they do have a store on Teachers Pay Teachers, if you're interested. They have very cute, 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 cute clip arts in there. I go to Insert, I click on Photo, and I go Picture from File. I have mine saved for this demonstration on my desktop. I'm going to go to Safari, scroll down to Lion, and click Insert. I could also just drag it over and then I manipulate it to the size that I want. I never ever grab from here. It'll just make your pictures very strange. Always use the corner. If you do something wrong and you want to change it, like I made that all weird and I don't want it to look like that, I can click, if, if you're using a Mac, click Command Z and it'll put back to the shape that you just had it in. And I'm going to make it smaller and then enlarge it from here. Now I really had to be careful with this because I didn't want it to look inappropriate. I had it like that originally and I thought, oh my gosh, if kids saw that, they would be thinking the worst. So I need to think about those kinds of things as I'm making my worksheets. So I want to move that over so that his body is actually covering up those lines, but I don't want his tail to go off the page. So let me see if I can fix that. Maybe if I move them down. How did I have it in the other one? Okay, so his feet are on there. And I think he's a little bit smaller. So be thinking about those kinds of things. You know, what are kids going to see? What are they going to think when they see what you've created? You know, you don't want to make, you, you want to make sure that there's nothing inappropriate in your work. Okay, so to make the little words I go to insert text box and I just go like this and I type in, let's see, the standard is one point geometry one, which stands for first grade geometry one. And let's just find another font. How about a brandy? And I click on that and then I highlight it and make it whatever size I want. So I think I had that actually at size 10. Oh, that's pretty small. I'm going to say 12. And I'm going to leave that there. And that just tells um, the person working on it, you know, it's always a good idea to have the standard that you're, you're um, using in that section. So there you go. That's some simple ways to create a worksheet. And if we go down to the bottom, you're probably wondering how I did these. So let me show you at the bottom what I did. You have a couple of options really with those lines. If you're going to create something that is a fill in the blank with plus or minus, you could always just create another text box and say something like three blank for equals seven whoops seven um, and then the kids fill in that blank so what I like to do if it's something like that I'm gonna make it bigger so we can see it more if I have that blank I can create a plus sign by going to insert shape I'm sorry insert well you could do shape there's a plus sign in here. You can do that one, which is nice because you can format it however you want. The problem with that is getting that to the right size. I mean, that's pretty huge. The other thing you can do, I believe you can insert a symbol. Let me see here. Yeah, the symbol is always nice because you don't have to, whoops, there's the symbol. So you can, um, it's basically like another text box. So if you want it to be a different size from your, let's see, let's try 18. If you want it to be a different size from your other words or letters, you can do that. Okay, moving on. I'm going to get rid of that. 
For the circles, I did basically the exact same thing that um, I did for these up here. I go to Insert Shape, and I did the circles, and I formatted them. No shadow, black line, and no fill. And then I made them small so that the, the kids can write their plus or their minus sign in there. One thing I want to encourage you to always do is to make sure your name is somewhere on your product. So I've just done a little text box. If you're wondering how to get that copyright symbol on there, when you make a text, I usually just do this. I go to insert symbol. It's right here. Click it. It pops up. You have to make sure you click over here. You can't just start typing once you put it in. You actually have to click on that. And then I always do the year and then my name. And then I always use the same font, which is the AA Claire. It's my favorite font, which um, you can buy at Teachers Pay Teachers. Make sure you get a commercial license for any fonts that you are using. And you need to make sure that you give credit where credit is due. So if I were to create this product and sell it online, I would need to make sure that I have a page that says who created my fonts and a clickable link to their store. And I usually make this in 10. And I always like to have it in the center. And then I'll show you something neat after I get it into place. So here I have it, and usually I do this the very last thing. You can always do it page by page. If you do it page by page, let's say you have another page and another page. What you can do is you can click it, right click it, no I'm sorry, click it, do controls, I'm, I'm sorry, command C, wow. Click on the next slide click command V and it's going to pop up in the exact same place on every page. So if you're going through your slideshow, you can see that it's not changing spots. All right. So I hope this is a helpful way to get you started on a worksheet that you'd like to create for your students or for a product in a Teachers Pay Teachers store. And I hope you have a great Great day.